Hey guys, it's Emmanuel Manny, another video. So I want to keep discussing Hobgoblin collecting. So some of the minor keys, talk about um, his appearances, right? In notable books in chronological order, um, especially Amazing Spider-Man, right? Where he makes the most appearances. So I kind of discussed in the first part, Roderick Kingsley, right? Who's the first Hobgoblin, some of his early um, appearances on Spectacular Spider-Man. And I've also discussed his first four appearances, right, on Amazing Spider-Man. And then his last appearance, right, was Spectacular Spider-Man 85 in the video, right, that I discussed. Remember, he gains his uh, superhuman strength powers from the Goblin Serum that he perfects. So this is Amazing Spider-Man 249, his next appearance, right, after Spectacular Spider-Man 85. So in this issue, um, I guess after perfecting the serum, battling Spider-Man a few times, I guess it paid off for him because he defeats Spider-Man in this issue, right? So one of the few villains to actually say that they've defeated Spider-Man, right? Not once, but twice, right? But then the Kingpin saves um, Spider-Man of all people, right? The Hobgoblin robot is a robot also makes an appearance in this issue. And then Roderick Kingsley makes an appearance with the Hobgoblin, but I think in my opinion, that's Daniel Kingsley, right? His stand-in, standing in for him, right? He uses his own brother to stand in for him. I think this is his first appearance as well. Okay, very cool cover. Book, I think, as a Hobgoblin collector, right? That should be prioritized. All right, and then this is the second part of this three-story part, or arc, story arc. Okay, Amazing Spider-Man 250, right? Classic, classic, uh, John Romita Jr. Uh, cover. Another book, uh, you know, as a collector, I think should be prioritized. This is Amazing Spider-Man 251. Okay, so this is the conclusion of this three-part story arc. And then this be final issue for Roger Stern as well. So Roger Stern, the co-creator, right, of the Hobgoblin, had some editorial uh, differences. And then he leaves, right? So this would be his last um, issue, right, in the ho um, Hobgoblin for a while. This is also just a very cool unmasking cover. Amazing 245 is one of the best ones, but I think this is also a classic unmasking cover where the Hobgoblin's teased. Um, also, in my opinion, this is the best battle between the Hobgoblin, right, and Spider-Man. I mean, they really, really do get out in this issue, okay? You also have an appearance by the Hobgoblin's Battleman, um, which we'll see play a role later issues. Okay, so this is Amazing Spider-Man 253. So Hobgoblin is not the focus of the story and he's not part of the subplot. So why am I including this? Well, it's the first appearance of the Rose. Okay, so it's just a cool, cool book just to have, right? The first appearance of the Rose. Um, the Rose and the Hobgoblin eventually team up, right? Hobgoblin meaning Ned Leeds, right? We're gonna see that the Hobgoblin, Roger Kingsley is gonna use um, Ned Leeds as a stand-in. Okay, so in the last issue, right, um, in Hobgoblin Lives, this is all explained, Hobgoblin is being trailed by Ned Leeds, right? So he decides to use Ned Leeds as a stand-in for him, okay? Which will eventually work, right? Ned Leeds, right, as the Hobgoblin is eventually going to work with the Rose, right? So that's why I think one of the reasons I think it's a key book to have as a Hobgoblin collector, okay? The next two books, Amazing Spider-Man 254 and 255, these are more subplot, right? He's kind of mentioned, he makes a brief cameo. So I, I think if you're collecting the Hobgoblin, I think these will be at the very, very, very bottom, right? In terms of collecting, okay? Jack-O-Lantern makes an appearance. He's after the Hobgoblin's battle van yeah, in this issue. Right? He's trying to retrieve it, All right? And Amazing Spider-Man 255, again, more of a subplot um, in terms of the story, okay? Um, also, you know, I, I also try to include Roderick Kingsley, right? Roderick Kingsley uh, in Amazing Spider-Man, right? He's going to make appearances here and there, okay? The Hobgoblin is going to be teased in terms of his identity, right? Some clues are going to be provided. Because remember, the Hobgoblin is still a mystery of who he is, right? So... This is also another reason why I kind of included, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 254, 255. You're going to see other books I'm going to include in, the, in this list because I think they're 
it's just good to have as a hobgoblin collector as you kind of see the evolution of the mystery right and how there were certain hints of who he is all right um although his reveal was a big disappointment which i'm gonna get to later on other videos right there's another book um again not hobgoblin key but i think it's just a nice book to have right if you're trying to read all these books chronologically okay of the first appearance of puma as well right so that's one reason it's a key it's a nice book to have and also amazing spider-man 257 which is the next book i'm going to go over that book reads a lot better when you read this one okay so that's one of the reasons why i like to have this one as well amazing spider-man 257 okay so the reason this is a key i guess right um the first appearance of ned leeds as the hobgoblin okay so as i mentioned right Roderick Kingsley brainwashed in their leads, and this is where he kind of makes his appearance, right? All brainwashed, right? Um, he's going to eventually work with the roles. So in the last page, right, of the book, the last panel, um, Hobgoblin approaches the roles. Okay, I think it's more of a cameo, but, you know, the grading companies all say it's the first appearance. I don't really think it's the first appearance, more of a cameo. Um it's also the second appearance, right, of Puma, right? He made his first appearance in the last issue, 256. Okay. So, Amazing Spider-Man 258. Okay, so this is a key symbiote is revealed to be alive. That Bagman, Spider-Man is also in this book, right? There's some FOMO around that character. But this is also important as the Hobgoblin um, storyline because the Rose right and the hobgoblin officially team up right the hobgoblin proves himself and now the hobgoblin and the roles are working together again then leads hobgoblin right roderick kings is using him right manipulate him right to get close to the roles okay the next issue is amazing spider-man 259 so in this issue it's more focused on spider-man returning to his red suit Mary Jane's origin, which is very well written, by the way. It's a very um, cool issue to read. And in this issue, the Hobgoblin, right, is more part of the subplot, right? He's going to start making his move on Harry Osborn, right? The son of Norman Osborn, right? The first Green Goblin, okay? To retrieve some of his journals, um, etc. right? And then the next issue is Amazing Spider-Man 260, Okay, very cool cover, right? I think as a Hobgoblin collector, right, is one of these covers that you want to secure. Okay, <clears throat> um, excuse me. And this is where, you know, the Hobgoblin kind of makes his move, right, on Harry Osborn. All right, again, the mid lead Hobgoblin. And then the last issue that I'll show off is Amazing Spider Man 261. Okay, another cool cover, right? So this is one, if you're a Hobgoblin collector, I definitely recommend you add this to your collection, okay? Um, this is the conclusion, right, of this story arc where the um, Hobgoblin is trying to retrieve those journals, right? Those Norman Osborn um, journals, okay? So and that is it for now, okay? So these are kind of the 250s, 260s. Um, the next series, I'm going to start going over the 270s. Right, a lot of subplot books on the two seventies, and then the two eighties. Right, I'm gonna go over those. Um, and again, mostly for the most part, this is Ned Leeds, right, um, in place of Roderick Kingsley. Okay, so as always, I appreciate everyone for watching. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, take care.